story time, I guess. Uh, oh my goodness. Rox, man, where did we even begin? Hmm? Hmm, me and Marlis, where did we start? A couple years ago, <laughs> I guess. Always oh, start off with the whole life story. Uh, I'm actually trying to write a book about it and everything too, so. Uh, Buckle on up, man. It's gonna be a long one for you. I'm telling you, it'll probably be like a 30 minute video. Not sure. But uh, my name is Josh Butler. I go by Josh Butler TV on all social media platforms. This right here is Rox. She's sleepy. And over here is Lil Rim. She's also sleepy. I'm gonna let them go to sleep while I just sit here and talk. So uh, I guess a lot of people only know my story from me walking the field with Roxy and Remy and uh, a lot of people think that um, my whole life story is just uh, based around my parents passing away and um, Roxy and Remy being there to help me cope with their death but that's what the media puts out to, to a lot of people and it's actually a lot deeper than that like that's that's not just you know what I'm saying it's partial of it probably like five percent of it but majority of it it's a lot so buckle your seat belts up um try your best not to fucking cry this is literally just a conversation that i'm willing to have with anybody um a lot of the experiences that i've experienced through life um there's a lot going on uh there's a lot uh, but i'm okay just okay though i'm not completely 100 percent fine but i am okay and i am willing to talk about it and i am willing to do this and help other people as well so by all means, feel free to drop anything in the comments on um, more of what you want to know or how to deal with other things. I do mental health Mondays for a reason. I'm trying to help as many people as I possibly can. So let's get into my life story. So um, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, and I grew up um, with two brothers. Uh, I also have two other brothers. One is a stepbrother and one uh, he's... He got the same last name as me and we grew up together and I actually think we're related but not really sure but anyway um, he's my brother regardless he's been been on him since he was like almost eight or something like that so long time and um, fuck it man we just gonna get right into it so basically um, a few years ago back in 2017 uh, my dad passed from having a heart attack or a stroke. They never determined on the um, on the uh, autopsy. It just, you know what I'm saying? I have no idea. But I have all that stuff. Um, where the start of my depression actually begins is probably just being a kid uh, back in school. Um, the main reason why I originally wanted to be as far as possible away from the environment that I grew up around is because I never wanted to be like the people that I was around. Um, every day I would watch my dad struggle with his depression, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to say, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people or minorities don't even deal with mental health at all. So the way he dealt with his was alcohol and smoking weed. Like that's all he did, you know? And um, he was in a bad state of mind and you know he lost he lost his mom back in like 2009 2008 my goodness no was it it was wow it's been a long time since i lost my granny but um yeah man it's just uh you know, um, after that, because that's all he had, you know, and it was just real tough for him. And, you know, I get to see all of that growing up. And I'm, I mean, as a kid, bro, like, that's the thing about having older brothers or older siblings or so many people. You got some people to, like, base your life off of. Like, if they fucking up, don't do what they're doing. Like, that's what I never wanted to be like, you know. And I wanted to get as far away from that as possible. Uh, so I would never end up like the people that I was around. So a lot of times the people would leave and, you know, they'll do, they'll do their thing out of high school and go to college and be right back after college after a year because they fuck up. They get in trouble with women. They get in trouble with drugs and alcohol or something like that. And now the majority of them are trying to be rappers or smoking and drinking just 24-7 back at the crib in Dallas. And I'm not trying to be like them whatsoever. I will prevail and I will succeed as much as possible. And that's what I want to do. So I went to school 
all the way in Michigan and went to go play football for Michigan State University. Got my master's degree, all of that. First in the family to do all that shit, right? Um, not to go to college though. My brothers didn't went to college, but first in the family to get like the master's degree. Um, but yeah, man, it's just like, I never wanted to be like that. And you know, when I left, like I said, my dad passed away. Um, actually, uh, before my first start, he, uh, huh, man, it was crazy, dog. Like, it was, that was like one of the most heartbreaking times of my, of my life, bro. Like, after he passed, yeah, I, I knew he wanted to, like, watch that game. I, I tried my best to try to play in that game, bro, and I just could not. I went in the stall. And you can ask Coach Coach Guest. Coach Guest was there for me. I went in the bathroom stall, bro, and I, I literally just broke down in there for the remainder of the game. I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Like, I couldn't believe it, bro. Like, you know, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't go home. I couldn't do nothing, bro. So I was just, I was just, I was down, bro. But we ended up winning that game, though, for sure. And, um, uh, yeah, and like I said, uh, you don't really understand. You don't see a lot. But now that I'm older and I'm going through a lot of shit to myself, I understand, like, the, the stuff and the difficulties that other people have dealt with but never expressed how, you know, cause they never knew how to get that help. Like my dad never knew how to get that help. And it's a generational thing. That's why a lot of people, minorities don't have like good mental health stuff and deal with depression very well. It's because like, you don't get that teaching at all. You don't get that teaching whatsoever. So man, like, like I'm saying, bro, um, but my mom, my mom was in legal trouble for a lot of the time. Um, she ended up getting in trouble. You can look it up. Yeah, it's, it's out there on the internet. She ended up getting in trouble and she was already sick. She had stage four breast cancer. Um, that's why I got this breast cancer tattoo on my side. You know, just for, I try to do as much as possible with anybody with cancer. I'm with celebrating the vision. Those are people who deal with people who survive for cancer. So I try to do as much as I possibly can that relates to anything that's, that's helping people. Even though as much as I don't like people whatsoever, because people fucking cruel ass, negative ass, evil ass people, but as, I will help you as much as possible if you're a genuinely good person. But anyway, like I'm saying, man, it's just like, I was just, going through a lot of shit and um, my mom was in legal trouble. She was uh, really, really fucking sick and you know, she came home and ended up passing away in my arms for stage four of breast cancer. Um, so I was just like trying to figure out everything. This is where the difficulties in life really just begins because like after my dad passed, I ended up managing his entire funeral. The entire thing, I have, I have everything y'all. When I tell y'all I have deaf documents, I have, all the funeral expenses. I didn't have no money in college, bro. I was the only one, the only fucking one to pay for the entire funeral. I had to go, I had to start a GoFundMe. And if people know how GoFundMe's work, you don't get that money until like a couple of days or so after. So I had to spend all my money um, that I was saving uh, through fast food and stuff just to pay for my dad's funeral and I didn't have enough and that's why I wear that uh, that chain that y'all always see let me go get that real quick this chain that y'all always see I've been wearing this every single day all my games and everything so this is my dad's crematory tag it says a crematory Dallas Texas 5504 right that's all it says, no name, no nothing, but I got this off his crematory tag when I went to go bury it um, at my granny's, his mom, uh, funeral, not funeral, at his mom's gravesite. So that's what I had to do, you know, I felt like he never visited my mom, he never visited his mom's um, gravesite whatsoever, he was just too hard for him. Uh, so for what, what I thought I should do was take his crematory uh, ashes and bury that with, with them. I literally dug this shit up with my, my hands and a garden shovel and digged it deep enough to where it would be secure and took the tag off of it. So, I, um, you know, I just feel like secure and safety. And uh, yeah, in the ring, the ring has my mom and dad death days in it and everything uh, that was given to me by a really good friend. This chain was 
represents strength. It was also given to me by a really good friend. Um, and so I wear this and it's meaningful for everybody that's in my life. Um, and that's why you see it on me 24 seven or around me 24 seven. Um, only time I don't have it on is when I gotta like do some jumps or something because sometimes it'll smack me in the eye, but that's beside the point. Anyway, um, what how Rocks and Remy was able to help me out through life in general, um, Rox came first, she came right after, right before my dad passed. She came in October after we beat uh, Michigan in that game in 2017, really great game. Uh, go green and um, she came around uh, So I had her before all of that stuff happened. So I was dealing with all that she was back in Michigan so I missed a, a couple of weeks of her growth um, I just had my friends or my roommates that I was with like you know watch her and take her out and stuff So I it was it was a lot going on bro because like I had to leave I couldn't play football. I had to manage my dad's funeral um, I couldn't even stay that long because I had to get back to school uh, You know what I'm saying my grades was going down all of this shit was built up into it, bro So it's a lot of things that was just going on through my mental health I was about to fail if you go look at my transcripts and stuff. I was like at a 1.6 GPA Shit was terrible shit was fucking terrible for me, bro. Like it was it was literally days that I didn't eat days that I didn't eat and I was getting injured in football to my to my PCL to my thumb um, and I, I twisted my ankle everything was so fucked up for me I, it is just life was just hard bro and then, then on top of that your mental is not right you you just lost your mom you lost your dad all of this shit bro it was just so much shit left and right left and right left and right this person dying that person dying this person this this person that and everybody's turning to me to fucking figure it out and I'm just a kid and I have no idea how to deal with none of this stuff because a lot of people don't deal with mental health or deal with certain things so I had to figure all of that shit out on my own which was really fucking tough for me to do by myself and I felt really betrayed by my family members because I felt like somebody could have fucking helped me somebody older my older brother or something could have fucking helped me somebody could have did this somebody could have did that somebody could have did one thing and you know what I'm saying there's a lot of really fucked up shit that just really just broke me down over the course of time because it was stuff left and right i didn't even mention how i even got my my, my dad's crematory tag after he passed um after my mom passed a year and a half later um I actually ended up getting my dad's crematory tag from the same funeral home and it's been in there for a whole year and a half. My brothers and them never went to go fucking get the crematory tags. Nobody went to go get it at all and I was telling them to go do it and I couldn't do everything from Michigan and everything was happening in Texas. I was like, bro, can y'all somebody go get my dad's ashes? They're ready. You know what I'm saying? I'm expecting my older brother to do something, bro. I was looking so forward to it. but. I can't hate them forever for the things and the actions that they did because everybody deals with things differently. And like I said, it's really hard to understand people's mental health because like a lot of people don't deal with it. So the way they cope with things are differently. And even though I felt betrayed, I kind of understand now because he didn't even know how to deal with it himself. It's very hard for my brother to even talk about things right now. So with that being said, man, it's just a lot of things that you don't understand, like a lot of people don't understand. Between school, football, dogs, um, life in general, there's a lot of bullshit that went on. Like, uh, like a lot of people don't know and understand the struggles that I had to endure during school. And during school, bro, it was one of the toughest times for me because like, I just never fucking, even wanted to be there bro there's a lot of times nobody and nobody talks about the suicidal thoughts like bro i feel like i can't harm myself but i just wake up and don't want to fucking be here at all i literally wake up and don't want to be here i um there was a one time where I, like i was just literally going through it mentally i my mom and everything knowing knowing all this and i'm like bro i can't you know say i can't do this i can't do that i was asking for help couldn't fucking get help the therapy sessions was not working for me because you know what i'm saying a lot of the times those are people who can't even relate to you uh, whatsoever or experience any of the things that you experience and i feel like you relate to the people that experience the same things that you have and that's why i try to talk to a lot of people that's out there who may experience the same thing that I have because the people who relate actually genuinely don't that's the thing the people that experience the same things they understand more than having a feeling towards you, you know what I mean like they get it and they may not feel the same way that you feel but they understand 
the things that you are going through and that's a big difference when it comes to your mental health because you just sometimes need somebody who fucking understands and would like to listen to you or anything that that you may go through so man like um back to the back to everything bro it's just like uh a lot of people don't get it, man. Like, it was times where I was about to fail out of my master's program and, and everything. Like, it, it, was, it was just so mentally draining to the point to where um, I ended up in the hospitals. Um, I lost so much weight. Uh, and, um, you know, physically and mentally, these two started to become... A really big helping hand in my life Remy as you can see Remy's strong she's strong she's strong as shit for a reason it's because um, she helped me out with a lot of my physicals um, attributes uh, I don't know if y'all can see the big difference but in my thumb that's why you know she opened the doors and shit so aggressively Roxy also know how to do that but I tore my thumb and I was in a sling for a while so while I was off of hydrocodone and everything and shit like that I had taught them how to do stuff physically and pick up things physically and um, bring things and items and stuff to me and you know it, all, all everybody and football players all know bro your body doesn't heal at all it only fucking gets worse so a lot of the times my shit hurts a lot of the time like my knees and shit I tore my ACL and PCL so a lot of the times my knees and shit were hurt really fucking bad to where I can't even bend down so I teach Remy how to get all that stuff for me um, and she's been doing a really fucking great job with all that stuff. She's been helping out with running. That's why, you know, like I make a lot of the things, you know, fun for now. Like the little four four shit, that shit. It's, it's, I'm very grateful to be able to fucking run as fast as I am now because, like, um, they actually been helping me out with my physical training all the time. Roxy is more so for the depression side of it and um, the mental health aspect of it. She reminds me a lot to eat and to go outside and do all that other stuff because sometimes I won't. I literally just just today today too i haven't even ate it's three o'clock i haven't eaten nothing at all um but eventually she'll remind me to make sure i eat and go outside and all that stuff like that too bro so um it's a it, it's a lot they you know they tell me so much and um you know if it weren't for them i'll probably be out by now like i've already told a lot of people bro once they go i'm gone <laughs> believe it or not bro like that's been my mindset for a long time bro you know i've already went through a lot of a lot of other shit like i said i don't think i can physically harm myself but i don't i don't want to be here anymore so um you know uh it's a lot of things that can't change that, bro, but it's just a lot going on with life in general. And um, like I said, a lot of y'all do don't don't fucking feel sad and shit like that, bro. Just sit here and relate. Um, so there's a lot of things that's going on with it's just all of that. And I don't even think I covered everything, but, you know, we moved out to California and trying our best, even though it's not the going the best right now. Um, life is just as hard you know and um everything is so fucking expensive so it's just life in general and who knows where shit will lead to next man like i said i'm writing a book i've been writing a book for a long time um hopefully you know i can finish it up this year and get it produced out and y'all can actually just read everything that i've been through um you know but as you grow up and you get older and you start to realize, you start to understand a lot of those things in life, um, there's not much that you can control. There's not much that you can do. But what you can do is also help other people out in life and be that helping hand whatsoever. You can also learn how to adapt and adjust to those mentally. You can also learn how to... Burf, burf, burf. <laughs> you can also learn how to relax. It's just people in the hallway. It's okay. You could just learn how to physically and mentally break that cycle of not getting help, of not talking about it, and doing something about it. You know, um, you know, my mental health right now capacity is probably at it's like 70, but I feel like my happiest moment or my goals and achievements will probably be at this happiest moment when I'm able to get a big backyard for Roxy and Ram and to basically just you know 
be a content creator or giving life advice for people and um, helping people as much as I possibly can. So, yeah, appreciate y'all. Listen, I'm not trying to make this too long of a video, but if any moment in given time y'all got something that y'all might be going through, just reach out to your boy. I love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, we, we appreciate the support. I wish a lot of people would come over to the YouTube and support on here because, like, that's probably the best platform to get support from. <laughs> but I love y'all, man. Uh, y'all keep y'all head up. Oh, also, before I exit this motherfucker, oh, bro, stop telling people they sorry for this and sorry for that. People don't want to hear that shit 24 fucking 7. I swear to God, they don't. I swear to God. Nobody wants to hear that fucking shit 24 7 because all you're doing is constantly reminding people of their pain. And nobody wants to hear that shit. Like, bro, it's okay to laugh. It's okay to joke. It's okay to do all this other shit. But please, for the love of God, stop telling people that you're sorry for this and sorry for that. Like, bro, just try to sometimes just listen and relate. You know what I mean? Like, jeez. Jesus. All right. Now, peace. Me, Rocks, and Remove out. Make sure y'all... Man, just make sure y'all smile. Y'all ain't got to do nothing else.